yep that's not good folks we're gonna have to fix that stick around and I'll show you how I repair this rotten wood so I'm getting ready to build my new deck but before I can build my new deck there's a little bit of uh, work I have to do here because the deck is going to overlap onto some uh, you know some rotten wood here and so I've determined I've laid out my deck here and so my deck is going to come to uh, to here it's going to be the end of the deck and then I'm going to have to put some posts and stuff up to support the new roof um, so you know once I get to this section here and further down you know that, that's all sound but you know, because the deck's going to come into this area here, I, I don't, I don't want to just cover this up. Um, you know, I need to repair this before I, you know, put the new deck, the new materials and stuff on here. As we go down along the way here, it gets a little bit worse um, until about, you know, this point here. Uh, you know, here it's well, here it's still a bit punky, but you know, I'll open this up and go back to wherever I have to go to fix this. So, what we have here is. Um, a header joist uh, some people will call this a rim joist you know there's different ways uh, different things that different people call things in different areas of the country and you know our videos uh, you know go all over the world uh, and so you know, things terminology varies from place to place but uh, whatever you want to call that thing I call it rotten and has to be fixed and so what, what, what the way this is is we have these uh, two by eight joists this home has two by eights and so here you can see a joist coming out uh, this way uh, and every 16 inches there's another one there coming out and they all end up uh, out here and this this outside board here I'll, I'm gonna call it a header uh, it's this is what uh, all of those joists that come out are attached to this way so every 16 inches you know we got one of those things um, so this thing is it's, it's kind of structural but it's not really structural the the, the uh, structural part of it is the joists underneath that's really what everything bears down onto is on, on those joists and this board just more or less keeps everything you know straight it keeps it from tipping and you know encloses it so it's kind of a structural thing but it's not really a structural thing so uh, but we definitely want to fix it you know we have this rod along the bottom of the of the uh, of the piece of wood and uh, the reason that 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 is rotten it all stems back from this window here so this window is not an original window to the home and uh, what has happened is the the uh, water was running down it's running over it was running on top of that window running through the window and then it's coming down through here okay and it ends up down here sits in here ran back this way uh, where the old deck was attached the old deck came up to this part here this point here and so you know we have that damage um, I suspect that there's got some damage in this wall here uh, I'm not gonna worry about that right now when I get my windows you know I'll be taking that window out and then I will you know be addressing you know anything that has to be corrected there at that point so for now I'm just interested in getting this repaired here so that you know I can put my new, de my new deck on and my new decks my new decks gonna come to you know to this point here and uh, as long as I've got this all corrected I'm okay um, you know I'll kind of worry about that later uh, I don't want to open things up too much here you know I'm still waiting for my windows it's gonna be another month yet before I get my windows uh, so you know I uh, in the interest of kind of you know keeping things looking together here for the the neighbors and the other people that live here um, you know I'm, I, I don't want to tear it all apart and then have it open until I get it, the new window so in order to access this ultimately what's gonna happen here is uh, my new deck I always set my new decks two inches below uh, the floor you know in this, uh, the floor this is sitting on the floor and so um, my new top of my new decks my new decks gonna be about here um, and when I do the new deck I have to flash it and you know put membranes and paper and stuff in there to weatherproof it uh, up, up against the house and so you know my my all of that flashing and stuff is gonna come up to about here 
and uh, so you know it all has to be good where I'm going to put my new flashing so long and short of that is that I have to open this up a little bit and so I can work on it so what I've done is um, I just picked 16 inches from there to here and uh, you know put us I snapped a chalk line on that and so I'm going to follow that chalk line there now uh, down to this point and then come down and then open this up so that I can work on it and then you know put my new flashings and, and uh, membranes and stuff like that in there um, so uh, to do this now this is tin now you know I could just take that whole piece of tin off you know and open up the whole wall but uh, you know we're a ways yet from putting siding on here and uh, you know just in the interest of keeping things looking kind of together here and you know sort of keeping some kind of weatherproofing on that wall I'm just gonna cut the tin there and open it up so the machine and I've here I've done it on this end here so you can kind of see uh, where I've you know cut this section out and now I'm ready to you know put my my new materials in here down here the decks gonna come to this point here all right so you know, my membranes and all that are gonna overlap a little bit and then when I put the new uh, siding on then those uh, the uh, house wrap will you know go then over top of these uh, membranes that I put on here which is just going to be tar paper and then we'll have uh, you know it'll be weatherproof to that together with a, a flashing on the deck will make it waterproof so no more water will get in here we won't have that problem that we have down there with that rot okay so uh, now how I'm going to cut this metal is with uh, a metal shear and so this is my my machine right here and so this is a um, you know this is a power tool and I told you in the last video how I collect tools and you know when I do a job I I buy a new tool and then I have it and so that's my tool for this job is uh, I bought this to cut this tin you know by the time I get done with this job I'll be doing a lot of tin cutting and you know I can do it with a pair of these and even just you know a utility knife will, will cut this so together you know together with those tools I'll be using uh, those to you know to, to cut that cut that out and uh, I'll show you how this tool works it's pretty cool yeah so this is uh, this is the metal shear and I just bought this thing off of Amazon it was less than a hundred bucks and so this isn't really you know necessarily a uh, professional grade tool but it's you know certainly all nothing wrong with it uh you know and i kind of like the corded tool still over the cordless tools so you know this is the kind of a tool that uh hvac person would have you know to cut metal for ducting and things like that and you know they would use it every day uh, i'm not going to use it every day so for a little bit you know that i'm going to use it I, I didn't have to buy a professional one but there's certainly not nothing wrong with this. Uh, this is a Wen brand, and I've bought Wen brand tools before, and I still have them. I've used them for years and years and years. But uh, uh, yeah, this uh, I'll show you how this works. This basically has a nibbler on the end here, and you get the tin in here, and uh, you just pull the trigger, and away you go. a seam so it's a little bit uh, a little bit thicker there so it takes a little bit more to get through that You can see we get this little this little curl that comes out of there so there's basically you know about a quarter of an inch uh, you know, of material that it takes out of there and so this is just rough work I'm, I don't have to be worry about it too much all right so yeah I'm opening up here I can see we got some more damage uh, this is an old electrical outlet that was there but again you know I'm just concerned to getting things repaired at least to this part here but, uh, 
that's really all I'm worried about. All right, so I can see I've got some pretty good damage here. So this is coming up into the wall now. So this is getting to be a little bit more than a floor repair. And, uh, you know, I was kind of expecting this. Uh, I wasn't expecting it quite to be this far. I expected it to be more like that up there. But, um, so, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to address this part of this right now. Uh, you know, when I get to windows and siding, you know, then I, when I strip this tin, tin off here, then I'll, uh, you know, then I'll get into that. So, the area that I'm concentrating on right now is here. And, you know, I can see that we're okay. I'm going to take and cut this wood out here. Uh, you know, I think the floor and the studs are going to be just fine. Um, I've got a, uh, a joiner plate here. And I'm going to I'm going to uh, repair this to this point. So you can see there's a, a joint here. So I will put new wood in from, from this point up to, you know, up to here somewhere. And then I'll be okay to go ahead with my deck. Again, do this something different with this later. Um, these little strips that you see here, you can see these little strips along the way. Uh, these are strips that tie the the uh, the wall to the floor, and uh, that's kind of unique to uh, mobile homes. Uh, you'll you'll see it also in some places where they have like uh, if you have hurricanes and things like that, they will put these they call them hurricane straps. But they're you know every second, uh, well every actually these studs these studs are 16 inches apart. So they do it every second stud. So here they put a strap here, not one there. They put one here. Okay, for us in our area, uh, we don't have to worry about hurricanes here. So, uh, you know, I'll be taking these straps out. I won't have, I won't, you know, I won't put them back in. Um, you know, these were just here basically to get it from the factory to the, you know, to the uh, site here. As it's going down the road which is you know basically like a hurricane when you take it down a road at 50 miles an hour um, so you won't be putting those back in right? if you were in a hurricane area then yeah you might want to put that all back but for us here we, we're not going to worry about that all right i'll carry on here tearing some things apart and show you as i go along yeah so uh yeah this is quite a can of worms we've got going on here uh we're gonna pretend we don't even see that uh, yeah it's not there uh, we're just gonna focus over here so uh, in all seriousness though folks uh, that will get repaired um, uh, you know I mentioned when I do the windows and siding but it's gonna to have to get repaired uh, sooner than that because uh, after I get my decks built um, you know the next thing will be skirting and then my uh, my trim board for my skirting so I have to have support you know for my skirting underneath here uh, so before I get to that point, I'm going to have to address this. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be a big repair here. Uh, we're going to save that for another video, another time. And we're looking at this. So this is the end of our deck right here. And you can see we've got, you know, everything is good here. Uh, what we have is a, a 2 by 8 floor joist right here, from here to here. That's a 2 by 8 joist. And then we have this uh, 3 quarter inch uh, particle board, which they use for a flooring. Lots of people freak out when they find out that there's particle board in these floors in these mobile homes. But uh, the particle board in these homes is a, it's a special particle board. It's not like the stuff you buy down at Home Depot. Um, you know, this stuff is is a completely different product. Basically, uh, I mean, it's still not like wood, plywood, but you know, it's not it's not as junky as you might think. And as long as you keep it dry, there's nothing wrong with it. Then what we have here is a one by four plate. So uh, instead of a two by four, like in a normal house, you'd have a two by four. Uh, mobile homes, usually they just use a one by four. Okay, and then we have the studs. Okay, so you can see our studs along the way here for our wall. Okay, we've got one here, and then we have our opening for our patio door. And, uh, you know, this is all good. Nothing wrong with this. This is fine. Uh, you know, I've cut this, uh, I've cut this out here, this OSB board, so I'm going to be repairing this back to this point. There is going to be some work I'm going to have to do here. Uh, again, I'm going to do that later. Uh, but up to here where, you know, my deck's going to be, this is all sound underneath here. I don't have to worry about that. It'll be just fine. Uh, I've taken I've taken the uh, OSB off of the of the header down here and you can see that, you know, this is all all sound. Here's where I made the cut. Um, so I don't have to do anything with that. 
Uh, so I think I've got a stud. I'm not sure where it is. I'll have to find it. There's going to be a joist here somewhere. Right here is a joist. So I will be uh, taking this strap off and cutting this back to this point and then replacing, replacing it from here to here, to this section here. So then I'll have a new header. Uh, you can see how the the belly wrap, um, you know, comes around and they fold it up underneath here and then they staple it. And then the USB board goes over top of that to, you know, hold everything together. All right. So down here, this is all fine. I don't have to worry about any of this. Uh, you know, I've trimmed off the, uh, the flange off the patio door and underneath the patio door so that I'll be able to run my uh, flashings and stuff right up to this uh, and it'll be ready you know for when I put the new door in same thing here uh, you know I've just opened it up around this opening I've taken off the brick mold here cut it here and same thing on the other side and you know clean it up to the bottom of the opening there so now you know I can put my uh, new tar paper on here my flashings uh, when I put the new deck on so on this end this is the end of the deck here so you can see this is all fine nothing wrong with this uh there is a little bit of damage here but this is just the uh this is just the osb this is minor it's just discolored it's still sound there's nothing wrong with that we're just going to go right over top of that um yeah so that's where we are i'm gonna cut that section of uh header joist out of there and uh, i'll show you when i get to that next point Okay, so I've got that uh, rotten wood peeled out of there. And so I've got this all opened up. And I'll just kind of explain this to you, how this works. We can get a little better look at it now. So so here you can see the, the 2 by 8 floor joist. And, you know, those floor joists go right across to the other side of the home. And they span over the metal beam there. So these, these joists are sitting on that metal beam there. That metal beam is what gives the home its, its uh, all the load goes into that beam. So the way this works, um, like I mentioned to you before that this piece of wood here is not really structural. Uh, this, uh, I'll explain to you how the load works. So in each stud, each in the wall here, we have studs, okay? In this particular home, we got them 16 inches apart. Um, up on the roof, I'm not sure the trusses, I think the trusses are 24 inches apart up there. But basically what happens is the load transfers from the roof down the stud, each stud, okay? And then you see how the stud is over top of the joist, all right? So the load is transferred from here to the 2 by 8 joist, okay? And then the load is transferred along that 2 by 8 and then it goes from there. The load is transferred then from the 2x8 where it sits on the beam to the beam and then the load is dispersed along the steel beam to the cribs which are you know uh, send the load to the ground so that's how this how this is load bearing thing works so you know like you can see i've got this thing has gone completely out i've got it totally out of here and it's not falling down right it's not moving it's not bending there's it's all the weight is still being maintained on these floor joists so um you know the uh, it's this is not not really load bearing the wall is not really sitting on on this it sits on the studs and you can see right there how this works all right so uh you know these jo the joists look pretty good on the end here so uh you know this is uh we're just going to put this back together with the new piece of wood uh you can see how the insulation is between the floor and the belly wrap here's the belly wrap okay uh, you know, once I get this restored, I will be pulling the belly, belly wrap back up like it is there. And uh, here you can see where we have a heat duct. You know, the heat pipe comes between the joists from the main plenum and then up through the floor into the room. All right, now we get down here. So I'm just going to go to here. I'm just going to stop with my new piece here. Uh, again, you know, the deck is here. So you can see how this is all, all good in here. Uh, once we put the new jo uh, header joist in here it'll be you know it'll be solid um now here i'm getting it here and i'm starting to see uh you know some some problem here so this is still solid on the top and bottom but um you know we do have some decay in here 
the way I treat this uh, is I uh, clean this up and then I have some wood preservative that I'm going to be putting in here. I'm also going to put some wood preservative along here. This is solid, but it's stained. Uh, the one by fours, you know, you can see here it, it's starting. We're starting to have some uh, failure of it here. So once I get into this, I will be coming back and, you know, repairing this. The bottom of this stud is still good. Okay. But we do have a little bit right on the very edge here of, you know, but it's, it's solid. <clears throat> get into this one and it's not so solid. So we're going to have to do something called sistering, you know, to, to beef these up. But this is, this is solid wood. This is just mold on here. <coughs> Excuse me, mildew. And if you see where I've been scraping on it, underneath it's clean wood. So, you know, this is still solid. Um, you know, basically the damage is in this outside edge joist. Um, so this one here, uh, what I'm going to do with this, you see we got a bit of problem there. I'm going to sister up to this one and I'll show you how that is. But that basically what a sister is, I'm going to cut a piece of uh, two by eight and I'm going to sister it up to this, which will give me a new end here to attach my new uh, header joist. And that's going to make that all solid. All right, I'll show you that how that sister works once I get to that point. All right, so I'll explain this sister thing to you. Um, sister means that you sister it up. So uh, this is that joist that had this, uh, you know, bit of rod on the end of it. Uh, this this joist is perfectly dry. Uh, it's solid on the top and the bottom, but uh, you know to make this better what we're gonna do is we sister this up so basically all that means is you know you don't have to take that whole thing out you know it's uh, you know you just go back a couple inches and it's all fine there so what we've done is um, taken a block a 2 by 8 block and sistered it on to the joist here so uh, I put some PL 400 on it uh, I'll show you what that is and then I've just screwed it with some 3 inch uh, construction screws and you know uh, attached it to that joist back where this wood is solid you know back further back in here where you can see where the wood is solid all right and so now what this does is it gives us a new end to attach uh, our new board that's going to go on here I've also put some preservative on there that dark what you see there is wood preservative so I've you know dabbed that all in there just to help stop that rot if that stays dry now and with that preservative in there you're not going to get any more uh, rot in there that's going to be fine I've also put the preservative along in here. This again, this is all sound. It's just discolored, um, you know, from the mold, uh, mildew, and uh, you know, but it's it's solid. And like I said, you know, we're coming to here with the deck. So uh, when I repair that part of the wall, you know, then we'll go back into here and, and fix this all up properly. But uh, for now, you know, we're just going to here. All right, so I'm ready to put that. Uh, new piece in there it is laying there and that's just some of the material that I salvaged out of the floor of the addition and it was a little bit wider it's, it was a quarter of an inch wider in 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 depth and so I just ran it through my table saw and took a quarter of an inch off to make it the same uh, distance as this so I'm ready to attach that now and I'm just going to be attaching that with some three inch uh, deck screws and uh, this is the PL400. Uh, this is just a, a, an adhesive that uh, comes in a caulking gun and you just squeeze it out and it's a, it's a uh, this is it here. I've dabbed the ends of it here. Um, and I just, I just you, you probably wouldn't need to do this, but I, I just do it because, you know, it's kind of broken up in pieces here and it just kind of helps to hold it all together. And uh, so now I'm gonna screw that on with these three inch screws. I'm just using deck screws because this is what I have. Uh, you know, can, you can use any kind of a three inch screw. Uh, you can use it. I would normally you just use the construction screws, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, the three inch screws, what you're after. And sometimes when you work along, alone, it would be nice to have an extra hand. Uh, so I'm just going to pop this thing in here myself.
got a bit of a bow in that piece of wood there. I'll use this to help me push it up. doing is just pushing the board up for me. Just driving it in like like a wedge. is really really tough stuff bit over here with this wedge Maybe too long actually it's pretty good there it is yeah it's good where it is all right so here's a little trick this is a bit lower than what I want it to be so if you take your screw put it in the, on the side you want to pull up and go in like this Piece up. I don't know if you saw how that went up, but it did. All right, so now actually, I'm a bit uh, not quite lined up here, so I'm going to get this one started. Okay, and I'm going to pull this one back out. It will stay there now. So I've got that PL400 in here where those two are joined and that's going to help to hold that together there. So how many screws do you put in? You saw me do more than I would normally do there. So the rule of thumb is that for a two by six, you put in three, two by eight, you put in four, a two by 10, you put in five, two by 12, you put in six. All right, so I'm just gonna finish screwing that off and uh, you can see we're almost, uh, almost done with this. All right, so uh, we've got that all tuned up here and we're ready to start building the new deck. And uh, well, that's gonna be our next video. But i uh, just kind of show you how this all 
ended up here so you know the new deck will be here so you know we're got a little bit past of the stuff we've uh, fixed so you know when we go to fix that we'll just bring it into this blend it in but yeah this is uh, all set to go here all the way over to the other side of the step and so now you can see what I've done here around the doors to prepare I'll show you a close-up of that underneath and once we start the, uh, the deck you'll see why I've done this you know so I've cut the flange and what I've done here is th this is the original door and they they sat this door on this one by four here and so what that does is it creates uh, this edge on the inside of the door which uh, is hard to hard to finish like what do you do with that edge um, I'll show you that edge on the inside here so there you can see it there all right so that's that one by four there and what that is it's just the bottom plate of the wall and they just they didn't cut it out they just left it there and uh, you know when you do your flooring or whatever you got to deal with that so we're gonna get rid of that and we're gonna set the door right down on the floor the new door when it comes will will go right down on the floor so this two by four or this one by four here this thickness of material that you see here is going to be gone and the new door is going to sit right down on the top edge of this osb here okay um and i'll show you how that all works how i finish underneath the door you know at, uh, when we get to that point but basically what happens is i have a, there's an l flashing that goes up like this and then there's a counter flashing that comes over like this and the bottom uh it's about an inch that's left showing after we get the deck all finished uh will be will be metal and so it's it'll be it's a finished product that way and uh, it makes a nice clean neat finish all right uh now when you put osb on now here's a little tip for you you do you do it diyers uh whenever you do put panels together like this uh you know whenever you have a joint like here again we have one here okay and up here as well you can see here and then you see here you notice that i haven't put them tight together so with osb you have to leave a uh, a space in between and if you're going to go down a whole wall your osb sheets are actually sized for spacing and it, it comes down to about a 1 8 inch uh, space is what you're after uh, so if you fit it tight and if it takes on moisture what can happen is it can buckle up it'll buckle on you and your panels will buckle um what i'm going to do here uh, j just to keep the weather out of this is i'm going to put some of that red technical tape so i've got this tape right here and i'm just going to be putting some of that along that joint there just to keep the weather out temporarily uh you know once the siding and everything goes on it's going to be completely watertight all right i'll just take you around so this this deck's ready to go now i'm ready ready to build this one and uh, the back porch is basically the same idea we don't have any rotten wood to fix over there but uh the, you know the back porch is going to get done kind of in conjunction with this sort of at the same time all right folks that's it for this one uh next video we'll be building some decks we're going to get into some interesting stuff now we're building the new some new work getting some new work done and uh start to see some changes here uh you know with some new new work coming in Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.